you who she is. Oh, I wish I had my camera now. Put down your bat and go get it. Becky up turns lion paper. I watch those pictures, Gina. Oh, you'll see them soon enough. Maybe on the cover of Business Week. Blackmailer. Lush. I know the only reason that you want to do this is so you can ruin everything Daddy spent an entire lifetime building. Stop that! Stop that! Oh, dirt is your specialty. You might get some more, Gina. Oh, you're really losing it now. You can't take the pressure. Mason! Don't call Mason. You fight your own battles for yourself, Gina. I don't need any help to fight a spoiled brat oh, like yeah? you. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Why don't you yeah. teach me what you learn in the gutter, you little... You know, Ted and Kelly are not even on your side anymore. Not oh, after last I night. I am not waiting for the time where I can beat you to death. And you've been staggering around like an old fool, drunken with that stupid sword. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, everyone took pictures of you every time you ate a fool out of your What are you doing? Stop it! Figueroa Street Clinic. No, I'm sorry, we're not open today. You're welcome. Figueroa Street Clinic. No, I'm sorry, the police are looking into it. That's all I can say to you. No, I don't know, not today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe later. Thank you. Never. Where'd your mama take Anna Maria when she had the fever? And you and Miguel. Was it your grandmother? Yeah, it was your grandmother. Where did she go when she hurt her hip real bad? I don't know, man. Really? I do. The clinic. Now you vatos think you're so bad, you could go in there and bust up the little clinic. Who do you think you're hurting? Your families is who, man? Butts. But you're gonna end up in a cell someplace with a cot and a toilet to tell your glorious deeds to. What, you you ticked off about something? You don't like your life? Hey, man, I understand. Why don't you do something about it? What? Like you? So we can hang around with some rich Anglo chick? So you can hang around anybody you damn well please, Mano, just like I can. Said, Ricky, you're not gonna have to worry about no hot love life once you get your, your picture on some post office wall. You ever think about that, man? Pay the favor sometime. Look what you've done! Wishing how ridiculous you look. And how dare you attack me in my own house? Wait a minute! Who attacked whom? And this is not your house. Just try and get me out of it. The only reason that you and a few of your tacky belongings haven't been thrown out into the sidewalk is because we don't need the scandal or the legal sniping, but you'll get your day, just like Daddy wanted. If you're so concerned about what Daddy wanted, why don't you let him die? What kind of a daughter are you anyway? He practically wrote you a letter from the grave That's begging enough, you. Gina. All you're concerned about is running the business. And you know, if CC dies, Mason and I will be right by your side. And that's what's stopping you, your ego and your greed. I don't need to hear anything about you from greed. Oh, go back to a boardroom and play lady executive. No, I'd like to stay here and work at home and keep an eye on you. Oh, I know what you like. You like having business meetings with your new friend, Kirk. So he could tell you how, how lovely you are, how smart you are. Gina. He could tell you what a financial whiz you are. I know why you keep him around. I see the way he looks Gina, at you. Gina, he's in the kitchen, please. Oh, he is? Well, then maybe he should hear it. He should know how you're leading him on. Spider-Man, that's a bit of cool, man. You gotta let him do this? Ricky, man. Ricky! You want something, Ricky? He's up. I don't think so. Let go of Stiff! Stiff! And the same thing you pigs did to my brother. I'm still confused about that, man. I'm going to explain it to you one more time. Geraldo was knocking over a liquor store when he went down, and he took two good cops with him. Yeah, too bad you weren't one of them. Man, I'm not a cop. Hey, once a pig, always once a pig. A pig! Who's a punk? Always a punk. You boys heard this? Somebody give this dude a license to take revenge on the world, huh? Hey, at least Geraldo is a man, huh? 
He didn't take nothing from nobody. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm not gonna talk down on the dead. You wanna follow in your brother's footsteps? You go right ahead. I'm telling you, man, I know you. Every one of you. I know your faces, your mothers, your sisters. I know where you live. You touch one old lady. You go near that clinic. You lay a finger on Danny Andrade again. I swear, I'll see every one of you put away for a long time. You think this homeboy is going to look out for going to protect you? Think again. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks a whole hell of a lot. You stand there and let him shove my dirt, my face in the dirt? Forget it, okay? All right, okay, good. Come on, let's go get him. He's not going no place. I said, I said, come on. What's wrong with you, man? Coming up behind his back like that, man. Hey, hey, you like to hear preaching? Then go to church, okay? Cruz is a brother. That's right, man. And you don't stab no brother in the back, man. What are you two all of a sudden? A couple of traitors here, huh? And that was stupid, what? man. Busting up that place. What for, huh? Because, because you're you're out, Spider. That's that's what for. Because you're out of the cold. No, man. No, man. You're out. Oh, oh, I'm out. It says who, okay? It says it says, it says us. That's right. <laughs> You, you, you be my witness. That that pig is is gonna is gonna pay. Dylan, do you think this is smart? What? They haven't kicked me out yet. There is a dress requirement. I mean, having once like this in the public. You're not wearing a dress. Why should I? The maitre d' knows me. Excuse me. Her sister Eden owns this restaurant. That's why you were allowed in. But then I can order anything I want? Yeah, anything you can pay for. You ought to have some of Nick's money left, right? Are you listening to me? What is salmon mouse? Is that anything like muskrat? <sighs> why are you being so difficult? I'm just being hungry. Kelly wants to punch you, and so do I. I'm sorry I've been away from civilization so long. Okay, so what are we supposed to do first? Something like drink tomato juice and talk about stuff, right? I don't even know if you should be here. Oh, of course I should. How else would I be able to thank Kelly for being so friendly to a stranger? I mean, letting me stay in your place and everything. Oh, my pleasure. Yes, it's very nice. It's uh, like going to sleep between the covers of Elegant Interiors magazine. I'm so glad you like it, Dylan. Yes, all the girls in, in medical school, they used to read this. Guys, too, probably. I think they used to put it between the pages of their anatomy books and pick out wicker furniture while they were listening to lectures on the fibula. Fun place. <clears throat> Nobody ever flunked out. If I were you, I would not mention the Caribbean or the medical school too much. Okay. What I'm trying to say, except you're not getting the message, is that if there is a remote possibility that someone could have followed you here, I want to know about it because I don't want her involved in that. In what? I can honestly say I do not think <clears throat> this is a place that anyone would look for me. The less you know about this, the better. But it's uh, not the law that he's ducking. Yeah, but you just mentioned the State Department. Well... Yeah, I know. That's still a mystery to me. Oh, they probably just want to say, hi, welcome home. <laughs> well, I guess one of us should go call the gallows. Oh, no, 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 no. You stay. I'll go. You are the least likely to strangle him right now. Maybe the uh, two most important people of my life should get acquainted. Save yourself. <clears throat> well, how about that? After all this you time... You liar. What? Picking up on your own brother's girlfriend. You knew all along who I Bo, was, Dylan. I did not. You didn't even tell me your name. Nick has pictures of me in his apartment. Well, so what? I didn't see them. I've only been there a couple of times. He also has a picture of me. Oh, yeah, from high school. And I would have known your name if you hadn't lied about that, too. What is this Rembrandt Van Gogh? Oh, well, if you're so enraged about it, then why didn't you tell Nick we met before? Mrs. K. 
Capwell, what happened? Um, I had an accident. She had an accident. Well, you better get out of those clothes, huh? I wonder how many times a day he says that. When you finish cleaning up here, I want you to take your paint and your scaffold and go. You're fired. Gina, it's not his fault. I know whose fault it is. Here. I wasn't going to use them anyway. What do you take me for? Listen, don't listen to a word she says, okay? She's not going to remember what she said tomorrow, and if she does, you talk to me. It's last night? Don't remind me. Well, I went ahead and brought you your ice bag and a nice cup of tea that Rosa made up. Oh, thank you. Okay, sure. Uh, tell me something. Did she mean, do I ask, what happened to your hands? Oh, um, I'll, I'll wash up. Uh, listen, do you have that, um... That that third quarter balance sheet? I mean, maybe we can make it for that meeting I missed this morning. Yeah, sure. As I was saying, did she wonder if I had asked you to take your clothes off? Uh, Kirk, look. You and I are going to be working very closely together. And we're going to be here a lot. So the one thing that you should understand right now is not to pay attention to a word that she says. All right. She's one of the loose ends that Daddy left for me to take care of, and I will. Mm-hmm. I can see why you're so anxious to get him up out of that bed. What do you mean? Well, I mean, aside from the fact that he's your father, you're going to be stuck with a lot of headaches if he doesn't. How dare you? It has nothing to do with that. I love my father. Eden, I know that. I'm sorry. Um, I need a few minutes by myself. Call Rosa and have her make some lunch for you. And if anybody calls, I'm not here. Okay. Okay, we're straight now. I didn't know who you were. Okay. I hope you and Nick don't argue. No, we never do. Not much. We don't. Sorry. This is something about Nick. <laughs> he doesn't fight back. Maybe I should give him a few pointers on how to handle you. You? Nick handles me just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's right. And I'm not too bad handling him either. Well, you're not bad for a country club brat. Yeah, well, I guess we all can't be on the State Department's hit parade. In fact, it's a good thing for you I didn't know who you were. Why? Listen, I wasn't feeling very friendly after what you did to Nick. Making him get all these extra jobs to raise your tuition, which you spent I don't know what. How about if I politely suggest that you have no idea what's gone down over the years between Nick and me? No more than I do about the two of you. I don't even see as how you're even entitled to an opinion. All right, I'm sorry. It's none of my business. However it may look, whatever it may seem to be, there's nothing that I would not do for that man. If I'd known that you were his girl, the one that he's so in love with, I would lay down in the dirt and let you wipe your feet on me. Well, it's the same way I feel about him, okay? You better. Damn well better. What about you and Janice? What about us? Does she know you go around restaurants and museums picking up on girls? Yes. And she doesn't care? I don't know. I have to ask her. Oh, I get it. It's okay for you to be loyal to a brother or a buddy, but not to a woman. Kelly, right? not all of us are born with a bit in their mouth. And it's okay for you to tell me I damn well better hang on to Nick? That's the way he is. What, you don't want the relationship? Of course I do. I'm in love with him. And what's the problem? Surprise, surprise. Nick called and asked me to join the party. Wasn't that nice? Yeah, we were just wondering what was taking him so long. Oh. So you two have finally met? Yep. Good. I'm glad. I got your letter last night. It upset me very much. I did some very foolish things. I realize that you have a right to ask that of me, but I just don't know if I have a right to do it. It isn't selfishness. It's just that I love you very much, and I have this silly idea in my mind that, that you're going to be better and that you're going to be all right. I've never seen anything that could beat you. But then I guess I just never saw death up close. You see, I'm going to be able to take care of all of this. I'm going to be able to deal with things the way that you wanted them. But forever? By myself? I mean, I'm not asking you to... to come back and, and, and take care of everything and fix it and make it better. I'm... Yes, I am. Yes, I am, because I get afraid. I get afraid, and I look around, and I see that everybody knows what they're doing except for me. 
I mean, I don't know if it's because I won't obey you and let you go. I just get so many feelings mixed up in one. It's like love and all the other feelings get all mixed up. I mean, if, if I knew that you weren't getting any better, if I knew that you weren't coming back, Daddy, Are you all right? You didn't? No! No, I, mean, I didn't touch anything, really. Uh, I didn't... I didn't think you were coming in here till tonight. Well, my shift doesn't start till later, but I always like to check in on your father whenever I get into the house. Sorry about the clinic. Is it bad? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Did Cruz come back with you? No. Eden. Mason and your mother told me about the letter that came last night. What did Mason say? Did he say what he would do? He wants your father to live. He's got a funny way of showing it. What would you do? Well, it's not really my business. The doctors say there's next to no hope. Do you think the same way they do? Do you? Mary? Eden, medicine is a remarkable science, but it's not a very old one. You know, we can predict the results of certain kinds of interventions, drugs, for instance, but we can't predict what the body will do on its own. People have a power to heal themselves that science knows nothing about. Now, what those doctors did not tell you, what they won't tell you, is that they don't know why your father's still alive. What about what he wants? What about the way he chose... chose to die? Oh, Eden, you don't believe that he wanted to die? He didn't want to be dependent. He didn't want to be a burden. Well, is he a burden? Of course not. Well, then, he's getting his wish, in a way. Where's Eden? She's, She's not upstairs. here. She's upstairs. She said to say that she was out. I'll just take these things into the kitchen. Thank you. Well, did she say she was going to be coming down soon? I don't know. Well, what's going on? How, how's she feeling? Well, better, I guess. Uh huh. Where did these come from? Last night. So I gathered. Yeah, I guess Eden really gave them all hell, huh? She's something else. She's unrecognizable. Maybe that's just a side of her you've never seen before, Cruz. So what's going on up there anyway? She's not with her father, is she? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Cruz, she said she didn't want to be disturbed. Oh, Kirk, let's get something straight, man. When you come knocking on the door, it's a disturbance. Me, I come and go here as I please. I'm just telling you what she said. Thanks. Is everything all right? Yeah, Aiden will be down in a minute. Yeah, I, you know, I don't like it too much when she's up there for a long time alone in that room. Uh, Cruz, I think that right now she needs to be. So I should just wait. I'm sure she'll be right down. <laughs> oh, Nick, you're crazy buying champagne. Good lunch. I'm in a good mood. Me too. If I could get you anything. What would it be? I am in a rare mood. Are you serious? <laughs> Anything? On, let's make a toast. We'll toast to you if you toast to us. Okay, a toast to Dylan and Jess. To Nick and Kelly. The odds of finding you both at the museum, and of course, neither of you knew what the other one looked like. Come on, if I could get you anything, now what would it be? Oh, um... Come on, Jess, make it good. As long as it's just hypothetical, though. Oh, no, Dylan's going to be rich. Really? Yes, didn't he tell you? No. Come on, what, what would it be? He uh, talks a lot, but he doesn't say much usually. Well? Um, a hotel, I guess. The plaza in New York would do. I'll mark you down. Hmm, a hotel. Mm. Why? I don't know. I don't like changing my own sheets. <laughs> yes, Dylan's going to have a gold mine. Oh, yeah? What? A real one. With gold. Janice. It's all right. Kelly's part of the family now. 
Dylan found this place in Africa and someone found out about it. That's why he had to leave Sam and fly straight back. Who's Sam? And that's why he ran out of gas and had to crash land. Sam's his partner. Crash land? Who did Sam? Would you please? Oh, I've just been so glad to see you. And I'm glad to see you, too. How about you, Nick? If I could get you anything, I mean, anything that Kelly couldn't buy you. I don't buy him things. Yes, you do. I buy you flowers and dinner every once in a while. How about the publishing company that's doing this book? Nah, how about just a house, period, with six or eight huge rooms, loads of glass, and a cliff somewhere overlooking the ocean? And enough rooms so that Dylan and Janice can come stay with us. Huh? I'll mark it down. The house, the money I owe you times ten. And for Kelly, I'll put a greenhouse in the back so she can bring you fresh flowers every day. Ah. So what did the insurance adjuster say? Oh, well, the clinic coverage is not good. Now, I mean, if I'd been hurt or one of the patients, then it would all be paid for, but all that equipment. People will help, you know. Yeah, we'll get by. I know we will. I think once you get it back together, you realize most of that equipment is more usable than you think right now. Cruz, do you think that those guys will come back, that gang? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm having them come back this afternoon to help you clean up. I was just going to make a couple of... No, no, no. Why not? I don't want to be alone with them. Oh, I'm going to be there too, Mary. Oh, are, are you? Yeah. Well, can we go right now then? Right now? Yeah, because I want to get back in time for my shift. And listen, you can make phone calls at the clinic. The phone works. Uh, yeah, sure. Just a second. Kirk, uh, listen, tell Eden I was here and that I'll call her later. Yeah, sure thing. Or if she wants to call me, she can reach me at the clinic. She'll, she'll know where that is. Okay, fine. Thanks a lot, man. Sorry. No, that's no problem. Thanks for being so patient. Mm -hmm. Did you have lunch? Yeah. How are you feeling? Who is it that just left? Uh, that was uh, Cruz and a nurse, Mary. Cruz? He was just here. Yeah, just for a few minutes. Did he come to see me? Well, I would assume. Then why didn't he? Well, maybe he thought you didn't want to be disturbed. Cruz? Did you tell him that? You know, he didn't say much to me. You know how he is. Well, then what did you say to him? That you'd gone upstairs to be alone. Something like that. Mr. Ben, why did he tell you where he was going? Eden, he said you, you can get in touch with him later. He's going to call here, all right? And would you mind? I mean, I have been waiting here all morning for you. I'm sorry. You see what you have. You ought to be grateful you weren't at dinner last night. Eden, your eldest daughter, made such a fool of herself. Which is nothing compared to what she did to me today. But that's all right. Because very soon, you're going to get what you want. Eden's going to get what she wants. But most importantly, so will I. What do you think about that, huh? Well, it's too late to be sorry now. Possible. Yes, very possible. Mrs. Capwell, what are you doing? Oh, I just thought Cece might want some fresh air. Mrs. Capwell, your husband is very susceptible to infection now. Oh, my goodness. Too much fresh air could give him pneumonia. Really? Takeover costs won't show till next quarter, you know, but that's going to be a respectable profit. It's there. You know, you may want to wait a little while for uh, maybe a couple of weeks or something, just sort of play up the suspense before releasing uh, the report. What? Are, are you hearing a, a word I'm saying? Of course I am. Eden, is it your father? What if someone were taken off life support systems? I mean, what would that mean legally? Well, I don't know. Every case is different. You know, and the law certainly isn't clear-cut. 
Jack would know better. Well, for example. Well, for example, if the uh, brain is not active, then the patient's declared dead, right? And the life support system would be shut off. Or if it was there was a terminal illness of some sort, no hope of recovery. You know, there might not be any problem there either. You know, eventually, this kind of decision has to be made between a uh, physician and family. What if the family doesn't agree? Well, then there's a problem. And anyone acting alone could be charged for murder. But doesn't the patient's wishes matter? Well, not if the family disagrees, no. That doesn't seem fair. You know, there is something now called a durable power of attorney that someone can sign, however, before he or she becomes ill, appointing a physician or family to make that kind of life and death um, decision. Well, my father didn't have one of those, but he did put it in writing. He did? Yes, in a letter to me that your father found in his files. I just got it yesterday. Oh, Jack didn't mention that to me. It was a letter stating that he didn't want to prolong his life artificially if it came right down to it. Now, this, this durable power of attorney... Right. Could this letter be the same thing? Well, it sure sounds like it, but I guess a lawyer could tell you. It means I wouldn't have to answer to anyone else. It would be just up to me. Well, look, why don't we give Jack a call? No. Well, why not? He, no. I mean, he's going to know and no, Kurt, we'll please. be able to put this to rest. Put, it, put down the phone. I really... I'm just talking loud. I'm, I'm just thinking. And, I mean, even if I had the decision, if it were mine, I don't know what I would decide. Susceptible to infection. Oh, Cece, I've learned so much about you since you've been sick. Pages and pages worth. I've learned all about these machines and your nurses and their beepers. I know exactly how long it takes to get from Eden's room to here. And from everyone else's room, too. And, you know, you were right. You said I should have a project to work on. And this one's almost done. I even racked my brain trying to remember how you talked and the words you used. And... I even learned how to copy your signature. So far, that letter I wrote to Eden from you was my masterpiece. I wish you could have read it. Want some? No, thank you. Mm. You used to do lots of interesting things with chocolate mousse. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. I got a laugh out of you, at least. I'm sorry. I'm just settling down, finally. I finally have a place that I can relax. Nobody breathing down my neck at the moment. I'll breathe down your neck if you want. Eat your moose. Wasn't that nice of them to buy us lunch? She owns the restaurant. No, she doesn't. Her sister does. Yes, it was nice. Mm. Well, they didn't stick around. Did you see the way she dragged Nick out of here? How well do you know Kelly? Not very. I don't think you like her very much. No, I'm just worried about Nick. She adores Nick. What don't you like about her? She's okay. I mean, she sends Nick flowers, and he probably writes poems to her. Roses are red, underpants itch. Kelly's got money, and she's a first and class. Dylan, no, she's not. She's sweet. Sure, like poison. Just because someone has money doesn't mean they're awful. You're right. I do hate her sometimes, though. She's got such nice clothes. Well, you don't need clothes to be beautiful. No way. I think they left in such a hurry. Do you think it was that urgent? Oh, sometimes people get urgent feelings. Myself, I often get them after a good meal. Or on the beach. Sometimes. Or listening to music. Oh, yes, music. And there was that one time in the plane. Oh, I love clouds. <laughs> the answer's no, right? The answer is later. I have some things I need to do. I'd like to take a look around, see where I'm at. Dylan, do you wish I weren't here? I don't mean here eating chocolate mousse. I mean here... Like I've been following you. Do I look dumb all of a sudden? I was not expecting this to come back to this. Yeah, I know. I went to that champagne made me so lazy. Here, let me clear off the couch. 
No. Yeah, don't worry about it. Here. Oh. Yet another one of Janice's tapes. You know, I do not know how that woman dresses herself in the morning. I like Janice. Yeah, she's nice. I could definitely pick her out of a crowd as one of Dylan's types. What's Dylan's type? Oh, who knows? You just said she did. Well, I think that uh, being blonde has something to do with it. You know, a lot of people are blonde. Hey, Nick, let's take the phone off the hook. Good idea. We can probably get a lot of work done. <laughs> Nick, come here. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Your problem is you don't know how to take a hint. No, my problem is I want everything to be a hint, but I'm just, uh... I'm just too shy. You know, sometimes, out of nowhere, you suddenly impress me so much. Today I felt like I was king of the world when I was showing you off to my brother. No, I don't think Dylan was too impressed. No, it's just a game. He does that sometimes. I love you. I love you, too. But listen, don't admire me too much. I'm nice, but I'm ordinary, right? But I can't help myself. <laughs> to me, you are extraordinary, and I'm very proud of myself for being able to realize that. You know, as you get older, you start to realize that your ability to see the world as it is changes. And all the earth-shaking things that you thought were going to happen to you, you realize that maybe they're not going to. The opportunities, they come and they go, and they have a striking similarity to the things you used to dream about. There's a growing tendency inside of yourself to say, well, maybe another time. I don't have room in my calendar right now. But Kelly, it takes so much heart and presence of mind to say, yeah, this is it. This is what I always wanted. And if you don't throw your heart and soul into going after it and put everything else behind you, you're going to be a loser for the rest of your life. of your father's, the Capwell Foundation, cash awards honoring, you know, individuals for... Hello? No. Uh, hold on a second. Rosa, telephone. Anyway, press is going to be going out in that. Jack's already sent me uh, notes on the articles and bylaws. <clears throat> Have you got it with you? No, it's at the office. So, are you ready to go? Well, actually, I'm feeling a little washed out today. Uh-huh. Well, look, why don't we just knock off about six and I'll take you out to dinner. What do you oh, say? Oh, well, thank you, but um, do you think you could just take care of this yourself? No, this isn't something I can take care of. Well, then how about if you messenger the papers to me? Messenger what papers? <laughs> you know, they aren't even drawn up yet. This is all in my head, Eden. Well, can we deal with this tomorrow morning? I mean, you have something else you could work on until then, don't you? Sure, absolutely. Oh, everything that we're letting slide. Kirk! I'm allowed a day off, for goodness sake. Fine, but what about me, Eden? I mean, am I gonna, are all my plans going to be constantly derailed whenever your, your boyfriend gets just a little hot and you want to sit by the phone? I don't owe you an explanation. Oh, yeah. Hey, I know just what you mean. Hey, Dad, where were you the first 15 years of my life? Kid, I don't owe you an explanation. Anyway, forget it. Look, I'm just an employee. Kirk, you are just an employee. Kirk, look, you are not an employee. You're smart and you're hardworking and... and... I respect you, and I appreciate everything you're doing. So send me a gold watch when I'm 50. Look, you don't understand, okay? I'm having a hard problem dealing with juggling my work and my private life. I know I'm not doing too well, all right? Eden, you know what it's like? It's like spinning plates up in the air. You know, like in the circus that jugglers do? Listen to me. You know, you concentrate on one, and then you concentrate on the other until, you know, another one has a problem. Yeah. I'll tell you what. What you've got to start concentrating on is that Capwell's company plate. Who's Cruz man? Hey, I don't know what he was or what he wasn't. That guy treats me like your chaperone. I'll talk to him about it. No, no, please. Uh, not, not, not in my ha behalf, all right? I mean, uh, please don't let me... Look, I feel bad thing. about this. I've got work to do tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, the offer still stands if he doesn't give you a call by dinner, all right? Kirk. 
I'll see you tomorrow. What we have done, we have wasted an entire day. Oh, yeah, well, that champagne was your idea. I love it. Mm. Let's do it again tomorrow. <laughs> Nick? Mm. I have to tell you something that I, I should have told you before. What? That you are my fairy godmother in disguise? I know. This morning when I met you at the, at the museum, remember? And Dylan was there, yeah. Well, I already knew who he was. I mean, I didn't know him, but I had met him before. What? How? Why didn't you tell me? Well, I guess we were a little embarrassed. I, it was stupid of me, I know. You mean that you had met him, but you didn't know who he was before that? Okay. Remember when I was waiting for you at the State Street Bistro? Yeah. Mason showed up, and we got in this argument, and I guess Dylan saw this going on, and he, he thought I was in trouble, and he ran over and stepped in on Dylan me. Dylan tried to pick you up? Okay, no, 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 no. Now, I don't know that's what he was thinking, but this is what I thought. Anyway, he followed me outside. We got into an argument, and I pulled out this can of mace that I carry, and he got upset, and, and it went off in his face, <laughs> but it was... <laughs> you caught him in the face? <laughs> well, yeah, but he was okay and everything, and then I, he kept asking my name, and I wouldn't tell him. But he told me that his name was Fernando! <laughs> and you didn't tell me because you thought I was going to be mad? Well, yeah. Dummy. Come in. No. Mm. Don't you know that I know you so well as a person I trust you completely? Mm. And Dylan is another story. I mean, I get jealous at everybody and everything if they get your attention for more than a second. But that's just how I am. I love you. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you right away I was. That's understandable. You just want to protect Dylan. Oh, wait until I see him. Hey, Nick, oh. Nick don't say anything about it. Why? Just because I feel funny about it, kind of. Up and it still works. That's the spirit. Bruce, we gotta go. Oh, yeah, I gotta go too. Well, I expect to see you guys back here at the same time tomorrow. Oh, uh, Spider, Ricardo. Look, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm not still mad about what happened, but you guys have done a lot to make up for it, so thanks. Good night, lady. Good night. Well, it's a start. Yeah, it's a start. Well, you should have seen Mason among the wreckage with his broom before. Yeah, I did, remember? I didn't think he knew how to work one. I can't think of too many people that he had made the effort for. He's been awfully good to me, Cruz. Yeah, well, maybe he's reformed. <laughs> or maybe he's, uh... Well, you never know, especially with the Capwell. 
Listen, you sure that phone's working, Mary? Yeah, uh, Cruz, Eden wasn't too sociable when I left her. I wouldn't take it personally. Yeah, it's not that. It's just that she gets crazy when she spends too much time up in that room alone. Yeah, I know. She talked a little bit about it. Yeah, well, she, she doesn't want him to die, obviously. It's, I mean, all this back and forth about should she or shouldn't she, that's just her way of kicking up dust so that nobody can see what's really going on, including her. Which is what, if you don't mind my asking? Which is that she doesn't know what she's going to do without him. what you want. Go on. Don't you have the news? Don't forget, Santa Barbara is with us once again tomorrow afternoon here on Sky One. In half an hour, it's the Brady Bunch, but stay with us now, because after the break, Ridge wants Brooke to console him in the bold and the beautiful. See you soon.